Our next guest spent his early years in Greece and now works in law enforcement in Las Vegas. He has also spoken out about gun rights in the U.S., and his name is Procopios Zeros. So how's it going, man? Good. You? I'm doing pretty good, doing pretty good. Uh, good to have you on the show. Uh, so t tell us... Tell, tell us about the gun laws in Greece. Well, it's a giant mess, and the people that understand those are probably no one because they just keep writing laws for any problem that they think they have, and uh, it doesn't solve anything. There are a lot of guns in Greece, mostly uh -huh. legal, uh, and there's a lot of windows in the laws that people get into, like uh, – practical shooting and uh, competition shooting, which you're allowed to purchase one firearm to start, and then you have to belong to a club, and then you have to do so many uh, uh, tournaments every month and compete in order to be able to keep it. And then after the years pass, you can go up to, uh, I'm not positive on the number, I think five. Uh -huh. where you can purchase up to five guns, and they also have rifle shooting, uh, but you cannot carry those. The, uh, the law in Greece, is specific you are allowed to have a permit to carry a gun but it's up to the police chief of the area if he's going to sign the paperwork for you to get it so most people do not have any unless they have money and they have connections sounds like new york and california <laughs> pretty much yeah so so what so what is the crime like generally speaking in greece well a long time ago when i was there which was like 33 years ago <laughs> okay, yeah. it wasn't that much maybe 10 murders a year yeah now with the uh migration of all the uh, populace from all over the world, crime is rampant. Uh, they pretty much, cops cops don't have the, uh, the same kind of uh, criminals that they have here over there. When they get attacked, they get attacked with people carrying AK-47s, grenades, explosives. And, uh, you know, you see that all the time. I, I used to go and train police in Greece years ago. And they would tell me that that stuff never happens. And now it's like weekly affairs. They do robberies with AK-47s. They I, sit in front of the police station and anarchists go by and shoot them with AK-47s. That's funny. Uh, it's, it, and the funny thing in Greece is you are only allowed to shoot back if they're actually shooting at you. And you're supposed to shoot back to wound, not to kill or to stop the threat, which is the, the law of, of common sense. Um, you know, like if a guy has a knife and he attacks you, you cannot shoot him. Are you serious? Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's mind-boggling just to hear how they think. Uh, they don't allow warning shots, but they uh, they say it's okay to do it if it's going to make the other person drop his gun. I mean, the guy the guy that has an AK-47 is not going to get scared when you shoot in the air with a knife. Right. Exactly. So it's it just not. I mean, and if you watch when they have uh, demonstrations like we have here. Molt of cocktails are like they carry them in bags and throw them at the cops. The cops get doused with fire and they're not allowed to shoot back. And if you do shoot back, you get convicted and you go to jail. I, it, it's I, mind boggling. It is. I just don't understand it because it's like you don't even have to, you don't, you don't really need that much intelligence to understand if someone's trying to kill you, you stop them. Well, according but, to, you know, their leaders over there, which is. I don't even want to get into that, but uh, they, they believe that you can disarm a person with a knife. Uh, of course, you know, none of them has ever wore a uniform and wore the shoes of a cop and went out there and tried to fight somebody with a knife that's crazy. Yeah. Or somebody with an AK-47 or a grenade launcher. I mean, they, they shot RPGs inside the American embassy. embassy. <laughs> and when they go in and they do search warrants in their residence, they find explosives, they find RPGs, they find... M16s, AK-47s, grenades, everything you could imagine. So the weapons are prevalent. <laughs> uh, just the, the, the law is not protecting the police officer. There's no right to self-defense in Greece. You cannot beat somebody that's broken into your house if they're trying to rape your wife. You're supposed to call the police and wait for them to come. And it's just nobody will change this because the law is the law. And uh, that's what it is. I mean, the people get arrested all the time for defending their property. They go inside the house to find a burglar. They try to take him down. They beat him. And the guy files charges against them, and they go to jail, too. I'm sorry. So we're not even just talking civilly. We're talking criminally. Yeah, criminal. Yeah, criminally. No, no, there's no civil. I mean, they, they, arrest, they arrest the police officer and carry him into jail with a criminal. So imagine if you killed somebody in your house that's raping your, you know, your wife or your daughter yeah. or trying to kidnap you. You have no right to self-defense. You can carry a gun, even if you have a permit, and you'll shoot somebody. Unless you know somebody higher in a higher place, you're not going to get away of getting arrested. 
So where, how did how did was Greece always like this? Like how did they get to this point? Because I I don't I don't I don't believe it was always like that. Socialism. That's uh, what happens, uh, and that's that's a bigger subject that we can you know get into today. But yeah. uh, you know the Greeks for six thousand years they've been fighting wars. For six thousand years, a Greek citizen from the age of seventeen to the age of sixty five had his guns and it was ready to go when the war was up. We fought battles that you know all over the world. And that, you know, having guns in Greece was, it was, you know, it was a must. You had to have them. And then after the '40s, when you know communism went in and tried to finish what World War II didn't, because you know, as you know, the the, uh, the Greek communists killed more people than the Germans did. Uh, they just gathered up all the guns and they destroyed them. Of course, they thought that they did because there's still people that have a lot of guns yeah. and they have pride in them. But you know, it's not like here where you can go to a store. And pick one up and just leave. In order to buy a gun in Greece, you have to have a psychologist say that you're of right mind and all kinds of stuff. And you have to have a safe to keep it in. And you know, and, and you can't give it to anybody. You can't carry it anywhere. There is no such thing as hollow point bullets in Greece because they're stop it. It's just amazing. If you get caught with a hollow point, you go to jail. Police officers go to jail for having more bullets than they're supposed to. What? So I'm so, they, wait. You know, the, even yeah, the even the cops have a magazine limitation. Yes, there's, like if you have a magazine for a Glock that's 19 rounds and you have three mags, that's above the 50 rounds they give you every month. So you have to download the magazines. And, you know, I, when I'm you sorry, hear no them disrespect, say this to you. No disrespect to anyone yeah. in Greece, from Greece. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, and they all know it. They know it, but that's how they control you. When they tell you, you know, I want to go, you know, practice... I need to get a permit so that, you know, your commanding officer signs the paper, says, here, you can have 35 rounds. But you can't buy 35 rounds. The box comes in 50, right? Well, I don't care. That's what I'm giving you, 35 rounds. And sometimes they have to produce the shells to show that they fired the uh, 35 so they can get more. So if you can imagine that. But this is, this is, this is, the, same, this is the same country that... I mean, they were, they, were, they were the catalyst to enlightenment to the rest of the world. Like, what happened? Yeah, now it's becoming Antifa. That's pretty much what it is over God. there. God. You know, socialism is, is socialism is taking over. I mean, we have Greek people that are starving in the middle of the street, and we're giving houses to immigrants coming out from other countries who are just rape and pillage everywhere. You can't even, you can't even fight them off your house. And that, that's what it is. And that's just, people, people don't believe in that. The people that own guns, and there's a gun culture in Greece just like it is here. Yeah. They believe just like we believe. And they want to do just like we do, and they're sensible and responsible citizens, but they're not allowed. They're not allowed. Like, you know, one, one hollow point bullet will land you in jail just like being in possession of a firearm. <laughs> so I have examples of that. Friends of mine. I'm, know, I'm, I'm laughing. Active police officers. I'm laughing out of disgust. Like, it, it's. Yeah, it is disgusting. Jesus Christ. Like, I didn't know. Like, none of this, all of this information to me is new completely ignorant about the gun culture, the gun laws, and everything that goes on in Greece. Um, and and the, I did not know they were functioning at such an exceptional level of stupidity. I, I, that is incredible to me, especially, in, and then you throw in the, 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 the cop element as well, just the restrictions in that regard. It's like, wh where, where, do, where do you draw the line between reality and just completely doing away with the understanding of the way the world works like it's all about votes there's nothing to do with citizens rights and anything else cops are uh, they have riots well, actually they call them peaceful demonstrations and we all know there's no such thing when they start burning things down because you yeah. only need five people from the other side just to start it and they tell the police officers thousand two thousand police officers that do the riot control to leave their guns in the bus in lockers and they have a holster that's empty so they get doused with gasoline and they put on fire and they hope that their partners will put them out. And th there are examples of this. You see them on TV. I don't know if you notice them when you watch international news. That happens every day there. And you can't do nothing to them. Absolutely nothing to them. If you shoot one of them, I mean, I know several examples where cops fired back yeah. and they're now doing jail time. That is for shooting back at people that doused them with gasoline. So what happens to the people who doused the cops with gasoline? Well, I mean, if they, you know, if they get shot, obviously, you know, they yeah, pay the price that way, yeah, but yeah. then they sue and then they do all the other stuff. And you know what happens? A cop doesn't want to, you know, they make $800 a month, $800 to $1,000 a month. For $1,000 a month, you want to put your life on the line? 
and people wondering why it's you know I mean and, and the cops in Greece are very conscientious I mean they do a job just like we do yeah. here in the United States and they try the best they can with what they have most of the time they pay their own money to buy their equipment so you get doused with gasoline and you burn you get nothing you get the emergency medical care and after that everybody forgets you that's crazy so, like, just, you, just like you you're having to confront protesters with no gun I won't walk to my mailbox <laughs> without carrying my gun. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you right there. Like, I, I think, I, and I think this is a, a beautiful example of how much we take our Second Amendment for granted here in this country. Like, Most people have no idea. Yeah, they have like, no idea how beautiful this country is. And our forefathers having that kind of mentality back then in the 1700s to think to create rights that nobody can take away and these people are fighting it but you know like I said earlier in one of my other interviews you know all these people that say that they don't want you to have a gun when something happens to them guess what they call somebody with a gun me with a gun yeah and they want me to help them <laughs> but the, they don't want to help themselves that is sad Never. that is incredibly is sad. sad that is so sad it's uh, total control socialism is total control of the you know the populace and that's that's what happens and when they start telling you what to do and they disarm you because that's they have to start there somewhere. Yeah. They have to disarm the public. If they disarm the public, they can control you. Jesus. That's throughout time. We saw that in Russia. We saw that in China. We saw that in Cuba. We saw that everywhere. And people still still pay respect to you know to to Stalin and you know to uh, Castro, and they wear T-shirts. And these people were killing innocent people like me and you on the street for protesting their rights. And that's what they want here. No, and that's, yeah, you're right. That's a crazy thing. But then at the same time, tell me I'm crazy for thinking nothing like that could ever happen here. Yeah, but yeah. you're not allowed to think what you want to think. But, they, you know, their thoughts is okay, but yours are wrong. And you're not allowed to say them. But their thoughts that, are That's another mind-boggling thing. But their thoughts are stupid. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Like, like, we're not like, allowed to say that. I, like, no, I'm saying it now. I'm going to say it. Because it's like literally, like, I, I, I... I get blown away by the fact that I literally have to take gun advice or, or gun critiques from people who are morons on the subject. You know, and, it, and it's not me just, just being kind of, you know, just being nasty. It's the truth. Like, you know, I'm having conversations with people and, and people who have agendas about firearms and, you know, they're anti-gun and they're part of organizations that claim to be about gun safety and, and they're really just nothing more than a cover for gun control groups. But yeah, they're trying to enlighten me or educate me on a topic they are absolute morons about. And I have to sit here and I have to listen to that. And, and if I don't, me, who, who has the, the knowledge and the expertise that I have on a subject, it, my, my word is somehow undermined by the fact that they think they know more. Um, and I can't think of anything more frustrating than someone who knows nothing about a subject trying to tell you about it that you know exceedingly more about. It's like me walking into brain surgery and telling the doctor he's doing it wrong. Um, you, you know what I mean? It, it's, but yet, these are the people who are making the laws in our country, making, the, making laws in these countries. Um, and the one thing that makes it even more frustrating is that we live in a free country here in America, and, we are, and there are just scores of people who are essentially just giving up rights, just willingly, just willingly, just, just, just here, take them from me. That's um, because nobody ever taught them what happens when you don't have a right to something anymore. You know, I mean, people believe still that a driver's license is a right. They don't even understand the difference between a privilege and a right. And it's hard for me being from, you know, from Greece to explain to Americans that it's not the same thing to have a driver's license to have the right to carry a gun. And all these things that happen in the United States, 50 states and territories that we're all United States, but I cannot, as a police officer, I can carry anywhere. But a person that's not a police officer cannot leave here and go to California and carry a gun even though he has a valid CCW permit. And this is a right we're talking about. It's not a driver's license. Yeah. If I can leave Nevada and go to California and drive, no problem. I literally I can carry I, my gun there. I can literally Tokyo drift throughout this entire country with my car. No one's going to tell me anything. But yet, if I go exactly. to, but, 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 but God forbid I want to bring my gun to a state that I've never been to before and may find myself in a bad area accidentally and have a gun for protection, all of a sudden it's no, 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 you can't have that. And, and it's weird to me because people feel like driving and, and having a driver's license and being able, and being able to cross state lines is a, is a right because of how convenient it is. But yet when we are talking about a firearm, 
which is essentially a tool utilized by people to protect their lives with. They will argue, argue with you tooth and nail about how that should not be a right. This, I mean, if you think about this, and you know, I don't want to expand too much, but you know, taking it away that right and making you dependent on the government is just like advocating welfare. No, for but, a job. No, but, but it's, it's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah, people don't thing. understand that. So you know, yeah, you can't have a gun. So you go over there and then you call the police. Guess what happens? All the politicians carry guns. Their bodyguards carry guns in every state. They don't have to get a different permit. <laughs> they just have to say they work for the government and they can go anywhere they want. So why are they allowed to carry guns and I'm not? So my self-defense and my, you know, my person is not as important as they are. I just don't understand that. And we vote them there. Yeah. This is what the problem is. It's not the morons that govern this country. It's the, the morons, morons that vote them in. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Because those, cause those, cause the, the politicians, they know exactly what they're doing. They're not stupid people. They understand, exactly. they, they understand language. They understand how to utilize language to manipulate people and get people to make stupid decisions for themselves that, that are counter to their self-interest. So it, it definitely, you are absolutely right. I think you hit the nail on the head with that. It's not that the politicians are morons. It's that we have a bunch of morons who are voting these politicians in to, vote, to, to carry out policies and laws that are against our self-interest. Um, we're we're going to take a quick break really quick, and we'll come back and we'll continue talking. Okay.